if I were to be released, I would, um, <clears throat> I would just want the simple life. I just want to hold down a job, make some friends. Hi folks, I'm Ignaty Vishnevetsky. I'm Alex Stout. Today we are talking about Ocean's 8. Welcome to Film Club. Brian De Palma made headlines this week when he, uh, in an interview with a French publication, said that Steven Soderbergh is not a visual director. Classic director shit talk. <laughs> I feel like Ocean's 8 is sort of uh, an accidental rebuttal <laughs> to that point. It's the first film in the Ocean series, a, a spin-off of Steven Soderbergh's three Ocean's films. It's the first one not directed by Steven Soderbergh. Gary Ross has taken over. Who's something of a Soderbergh associate. And yeah. you're right, this is, if this film has any lasting value, <laughs> it is as a teaching aid to show film yeah. students just how much craft goes into making a film that seems outwardly breezy. Yes. Because what we've basically got is, yes, it's a, it's, it's a sequel to the Oceans films. It's mm -hmm. also a spin-off and also kind of a remake of Oceans 11 mm -hmm. with an all-female crew yeah. led by Debbie Ocean, played by Sandra Bullock, who's playing the... Heretofore unmentioned sister of yeah. Danny Ocean, George who's Clooney's a, character. Yeah, of, who's apparently dead, but, yep. you know, it's it seems like everybody's presuming he's faking it. Yeah, in hopes that they can get Clooney to do a cameo they, at some Yeah, point. so they can get yeah. a 9 and a 10, and then they'll be <laughs> yeah. back to 11 again. <laughs> Debbie Ocean, the sister of Danny Ocean, and she's been in prison for five years. She gets paroled, she returns to Manhattan, instantly sets her heist into motion that she's been planning all these years. Mm -hmm. So you have the basic structure of the first film, except a lot sloppier. Yeah, yeah. Uh, a good cast, I would say. Um, you have Sandra Bullock, you have Kate Blanchett, you have Anne Hathaway. Um, Helena Bonham Carter. That's right. It kind yeah. of gets the Elliot Gould role. Yeah, here. kind of, yeah. <laughs> it's funny, there's three less members than Soderbergh's Ocean's Eleven, mm -hmm. but these characters have a bit less personality. Or some of them have not been written at all, like Rihanna's character, yeah. who is just there. Uh, she's kind of the, the tech person in the crew. The hacker, mm -hmm. whose dialogue is mostly indecipherable, but then she only has like five or six lines. Right. This is one of those movies where the question of what constitutes taking it on its own terms is kind of tricky because it wants to remind you constantly of the earlier Oceans films. It's yeah. making all of these callbacks. It, it is kind of intentionally rehashing, reworking things from early movies, especially the first film. And it doesn't, it's not a good Oceans movie compared to the previous yeah. three. But it, if you take it as a heist film, just a pure just purely within the standards of the genre, it doesn't really work either. You're right. It's a really self-defeating strategy. I mean, I'm of the opinion that, that Soderbergh's Ocean sequels are a little overrated. I think those ones actually kind of uh, suffer in comparison to the first Ocean's Eleven, which is just this really beautifully constructed piece of pure entertainment, you know? Mm -hmm. But those movies, again, still have uh, a stronger sense of chemistry between their cast members. They have Soderbergh's very advanced sense of style. And they're just better constructed plots, too. So part of the problem here, besides the fact that the characters are not very clearly delineated, obviously they're still they're talented actors. Mm -hmm. They've got comic timing. They sure. can do the banter. But, you know, this is not a very dexterous film. It's not very good at... Uh, basically following the crew, and the heist is kind of a its kind of a mess. The heist actually isn't very intricate when it comes down to it. I mean, it's another element of the film that compares sort of unflatteringly to Ocean's Eleven. Sort of one of the big pleasures of that film is how it cons the audience into believing that at certain points during this heist that they're pulling off in the casino, that they might actually fail. Yeah, there's a, that that kind of that Vegas magic act quality. Yes, to, very much so. To the original film. And you don't get the full picture until until it's finally come together. This movie does a very uh, a very unsophisticated variation on that, but I never felt at any point that these characters were in danger of getting caught. Well, there's no antagonist in right. this movie. Right. There is no villain. There's no internal tension. There's really no suspense. And so what you're watching are just the mechanics of this plot, and the plot isn't really great. This isn't a sparkling script. It's a right. movie that's basically coasting on the performances of its stars, and their characters are pretty uneven. Yeah, and I think that it's, it's sort of a wealth of style might have compensated. But again, Gary Ross, who made Pleasantville, who made Seabiscuit, who made the rather ugly-looking first Hunger Games film, mm -hmm. he's no Steven Soderbergh. Okay, everybody. Let's get started. Here we go. 